Hey guys, what's going on? Uh, back at it again, video number two in my six part video series on the Army Combat Fitness Test. Today I'm gonna go over the standing power throw. Kind of fitting, I just got an email two days ago uh, from a female soldier who's able to hit the minimum, but she's not happy with it and she wants to be able to throw it further, which is great, I love that. And so uh, we, we had a little bit of a dialogue and I'm kinda gonna go over the things that I talked with her about because I've found those to be the problem areas for most people or things that people don't necessarily think about uh, when it comes to the standing power throw. Now, this movement with the people that I've worked with already previously, the people who do the best at it or the people who pick it up the quickest and understand it and are able to like put the pieces together um, are people who played sports or still play sports um, to this day. Typically, people that are more athletic have an easier time picking up something that's a little bit more skill based because I would I would argue that this is requires the most the most athleticism the most skill um, the most coordination of any of the other tests uh, where the other tests are really just about you know being strong uh, moving quick having some endurance um, but this one there there is this like coordination level to it with having to throw a ball you got to grip the ball you got to let go of it at the right angle. So there's a lot of moving pieces with this one and getting to the ball, like the grip is usually the first thing that I start with with anybody. Now, um, with the ball, you don't want your hands on the side of the ball. If your hands are on the side of the ball, you A, you have to squeeze the ball really hard to have control of it because if you're trying to put force into something, you're trying to throw the ball, if you're moving your arms really quick and your body really quick, that ball is going to want to slide out of your hands and so you'll either let go of the ball way way too early or it's going to just fall out of your hands in a sense um so the it's like throwing a punch you want to be able to have the loosest grip on the ball that allows you to throw it the farthest distance if that makes sense um so like with a boxer throwing a punch they don't just have like a death grip on their um fist the entire time they're throwing a punch because it slows everything down so their hand is loose in a sense until the end of the punch the last couple inches of that punch and that's when they squeeze it so similar similar here is the easy way to replicate that is get your hands under the ball a little a little more so if i had like a the ball in my hand i would try to have my pinkies either touching to start with and play around with that and see how that goes or move them apart a little bit but this way i have the majority of my surface area of my hands is underneath the ball. That's going to allow me to put all of my force into the ball to go horizontally versus me squeezing the ball, trying to keep my grip on it to then try to throw it. So make it easier for yourself, especially for someone who has smaller hands. You want to try to get your hands as far under that ball as possible. Um, your arms. So with when it comes to your arms, I've seen people kind of keep their arms bent the entire time going through the motion. And what they tend to do is they tend to let go of the ball late and they tend to throw it down right into the ground behind them. I mean, not right behind them, but they don't get as much elevation on the ball as, as you want. So you can get into the whole physics of it and the biomechanics of it. Ideally, the ball comes out at a 45 degree angle. You got some wiggle room there, right? Like it doesn't need to be perfect. Um, you don't have to bust out a protractor and, and make sure it's coming out at a good angle. But a thing that you can do, set a camera up and view you from the side so you can see what angle you're letting it go at. We all have high def uh, video cameras in our hands nowadays or in our pockets. So might as well use it and film yourself just to kind of see what angle you're letting go of the ball at. Because it'll, it'll usually tell you if you're letting go of it too early or if you're letting go of it too late. Um, that's kind of where that coordination, proprioception, kind of knowing where you are and when to let go of the ball is. Um, but for your arms, ideally at the point of letting go of the ball, you would like your arms to be fully extended. That's going to increase your lever arm. That's going to allow you to generate the most force and put the most force and have that biomechanical advantage. It's similar to a catapult. A catapult, the longer the arm of the catapult, the farther the catapult could throw a rock or a human head or whatever they were throwing back in medieval times. So if you if your arms are bent, you immediately just shorten your lever arm. So you're not you're just naturally not going to be able to throw it as far. So so long arms. So tuck your hands under. Long arms. Um, those are the first two things. Uh, the third thing was uh, 
your legs. Like people forget, like this is a whole body movement. Uh, when I first had people doing this, they, they were just standing there and just would kind of bend over like at their back and then they would just like extend their back as hard and as fast as they could and just try to throw the ball over their head and just use all back, all arms. Your legs are the most powerful thing on you um, unless you're like one of those guys that's just like real beach body and just has tiny little legs. But your legs are powerful, so you want to use them. This is a whole body movement. You're, it's about generating force, it's about generating power, and it all comes from your quads, your glutes, your hamstrings, your calves. So you really want to use your legs with this test. Um, I'm sure most of you have probably done a kettlebell swing. Um, and that's kind of like the counter movement that I try to teach people to do when it comes to actually throwing it further because it allows you to load your legs up like a spring, like you coil a spring down and then you let it go. So um, I usually like start with the ball up over your head or you can kind of start it at your like chin and it's okay to like come down, come back up, come down and come back up. I usually like for me, I do like two of those and then I throw it like on the third one or I throw it on the second one, just kind of pen depends on how I feel. Um, but it's this is a hip hinge movement. So your hips, it's all in the hips, like Chubbs Peterson said. Like that's is that's gonna generate the most power for you. So just standing and throwing a ball, like yes, I could stand and just throw a ball and I could hit the minimum, but like I've also been training, um, like I'm a little bit more of an explosive athlete in a sense because of like Olympic weightlifting. So for me, yeah, okay, I could get away with doing that. But if I wanna like max it out, I gotta put all of my legs, all of that power, push the earth as hard as I can to generate that force into the ball. Um, so that kind of comes into things that you can do to help that, to help train your legs. Um, I'll link below, I have a medicine ball like granny toss. So instead of trying to throw it, um, horizontal behind you, it's about trying to throw the medicine ball straight up in the air. And the reason I like to teach people that first is because it really gives them that opportunity to feel that counter movement, load up their legs, and they're just working on releasing the ball, but generating force, generating like that power, putting it into the ball and throwing it up overhead. Uh, box jumps are okay, or, or are good. Now, you want to focus on those not crossfit style where you're trying to like get a bunch done in a wad you really like you want to just focus on jumping and getting your hips not your feet your hips as high as you can so it doesn't matter if you just have a box that's you know only 15 20 inches like if you just try to jump as high as you can and then just land on the box soft you're you're training that movement you're training that triple extension and that being extending your hips your knees and your ankles all together um what else do I have? What was the other one? Vertical jumps, just standing. Like, so think like a basketball player going up for a rebound in a game or like a volleyball athlete, like spiking, jumping to block. Like that's a vertical jump. And the great thing is you don't need any equipment for it. So that's something that you can do without any equipment. You can do it whenever. Um, it's not, it's not super, super taxing on you. Um, so that's a good one. And then the big thing is like the whole coordination component putting the pieces all together. Now, ideally, like when it comes to coordination, you, you build it over time. It's not something that just shows up. Like you don't just, I mean, granted, okay, maybe some people can just, they're just like natural um, with like hand-eye coordination or they're like, just they pick up a guitar and they can just, they can just shred on a guitar. But for the vast majority of people, like, you can train your coordination, you can practice it. And so like for coordination like this, I'm talking like your whole body, that whole spatial awareness of knowing where your body is in space, your proprioception, knowing when to let go of the ball. And so start with a lighter ball, focus on your grip, make sure your grip is good. And don't try to throw it as hard as you possibly can when you're first learning it. So it's better to get all of the positions right, get the release point down, and then slowly work on building that speed up. Uh, I'm a big fan of like power cleans, if you can do them right. Like, so if, if that's something like you would like to do, if you'd like to learn or know how to do them better, like send me a video, I'll, I'll happily like take a look and help you if I can. Um, but like something like that is, you're, you're generating nothing but force, nothing but power. 
Um, you're moving something that is way heavier than a 10 pound medicine ball. So that's gonna really carry over to this, to this movement because that's what this is. You generate power through these other drills and exercises and then you put it all together in the standing power throw. So that's where the practice comes in. Uh, you don't have to do a million throws of this every day. Start with a lighter ball, work up to something heavier. A few, a few days a week, definitely. Get a med ball, throw the thing. You don't have to do 100 reps, you know, four to six sets, two to three reps. They don't have to be rapid fire either. Throw the ball, walk down to it, throw it back. Because this is a more taxing of a movement in a sense because it's whole body coordination. Your nervous system's really amped up for it. So you want to try to generate as much force as possible. So you usually need a little bit more recovery time. Um, so that's really the big things uh, to think about with that. So focus on your grip. Make sure you're letting go of the ball with your arms straight. Don't forget, use those legs that you have. That's where all of your power comes from. And then coordination. Take it slow. Start lighter. Start slower. Work on building the speed up. Okay? And then when you get the speed down, then go a little bit heavier, a little bit heavier. And then if you have the coordination down and you have it and you feel good and you want to try to throw a heavier med ball, cool. Try to throw an 11 pound ball. Try to throw a 12 pound ball. And it doesn't have to be the standard ball that they use for the ACFT. You can throw one of those Dynamax uh, med balls. It's a little bit bigger. Like it, you're still training the movement in a sense. Um, but as the test gets closer, obviously you wanna start throwing um, that harder 10 pound uh, rubber ball. But but yeah, so if you have any other specific questions about it, uh, if you're having any problems, hit me up in the comment section below. Uh, check out my website, gpshumanperformance.com. I also have a 12-week ACFT train-up plan offered on Train Heroic. I'll link to that below. But yeah, hope this can help you. And again, if you have any questions, seriously, hit me up. I'm the one who responds to everything. Or you can shoot me an email. Uh, if you want it to be more private, gpshumanperformance at gmail.com. Peace.